Well, for more details on President-elect Buhari's big win, we are joined by VOA correspondent Peter Kolonte live in Abuja. Peter, Nigerian voters sent a strong message that they are ready to move in a new direction on key issues like security and unemployment, right? Indeed, uh, President-elect Mohamed Buhari made that clear that the message of the Nigerian people is clear. They want security, they want to feel protected, and they want a different direction that the country is currently in right now. Well, it's like the first full day uh, in Nigeria for uh, that reality for everybody. Uh, what do you sense around uh, the city in Abuja? and What are you hearing from the rest of the country? The, the mood in Abuja is that of excitement because before the election of Buhari was declared winner last night or early this morning by the chairman of the INEC, uh, people were really jittery. They feared there could be violence, especially when the uh, PDP uh, party representative at the polling uh, coalition center uh, was uh, a little uncomfortable with the results that were coming, especially from the north. He raised issues and actually halted proceedings for approximately 30 minutes, and people thought that could have created panic. But uh, Professor Jiga stayed calm, answered the questions, and proceedings uh, continued. He later came up to apologize. But then the president uh, went on the air and appealed for calm and congratulated General Buhari. That significantly eased tension, especially here in the capital, Abuja. And you know, it is indeed significant that the president quickly uh, congratulated uh, President-elect Buhari. Uh, but w what are the other members of PDP saying? Are you seeing messages of congratulation from all over the country, from PDP supporters and leaders? Well, not quite. Um, some of them, as uh, they say, are licking their wounds at the moment. But then when I interacted with them last night and early this morning, they were saying they are planning to launch a legal challenge to the outcome of the result, especially in the northern part of the country, Kano, Katina, where General Buhari got big numbers there because of the overwhelming support he has from that part of the country. They say that uh, there appear to be voter irregularities or rigging in that part of the country. But when I spoke with uh, Atairu Jigat this afternoon at the ICC, when I had an interview with him, he dismissed those allegations at, without merit, but said that a constitution provides the platform for the losing party to launch a legal challenge that will be adhered to by the court. The court will rule over it, but it remains to be seen how that will go. Now, Peter, we know we did mention this a little bit in our earlier report, but what do citizens say they want to see President-elect, once he's sworn in, uh, achieve or tackle immediately? Well, I, I didn't get your question clear because of the noise here, but okay. what I can say is that uh, General Mohamed Buhari expressed confidence in the electoral process and he said that the message to him by the Nigerian people is abundantly clear. They want security, they want good governance, they want a government that hears their cry, they want a government that listens to their concerns and addresses them appropriately. They want security to be bolstered, especially to Boko Haram to be defeated. And he vowed that with their common will and determination that his administration will implement, security measures will be put in place such that Boko Haram will be defeated and that Nigerians will feel secure in their own homes. And in fact, very quickly, has there been any talk of uh, or activities by Boko Haram, at least in the last few hours? Well, for the last few hours, it's been really quiet in the north because the military has been putting a lot of pressure on them, coupled with allied forces from neighboring countries. Well, Peter, thank you very much. Uh, VOA is Peter Clote reporting You're live welcome. from Abuja in Nigeria. Well, the White House has issued a statement from President Barack Obama on the Nigerian elections. In part, Mr. Obama said the last few days have shown the world the strength of Nigeria's commitment to democratic principles by turning out in large numbers and sometimes waiting all day to cast their votes. And Nigerians came together to decide the future of their country peacefully.
The president goes on to say, I quote, I commend President Goodluck Jonathan and President-elect Mohamed Buhari for their public commitments to nonviolence throughout the campaign. President Jonathan has placed his country's interest first by conceding uh, the election and congratulating President-elect Buhari on his victory. I urge President-elect Buhari and President Jonathan to repeat their calls to their supporters to continue to respect the election outcomes, focus on unifying the country, and together lead Nigeria through a peaceful transition." End of court. Now, for some perspective on the historic Nigerian election, Moses Ochono, professor of history at Vanderbilt University, joins us via Skype from Nashville, Tennessee. Here in the studio, we have Leo Kayan, head of VOA's House uh, Service. Uh, gentlemen, welcome both of you. Thank you, Pablo. And I want to start with you, Professor Ochono. We have uh, spoken with you quite a number of times on this show. Uh, did you see this coming? Yes, to some extent, yes, because the momentum really resided with the APC, uh, General Buhari's party. Uh, not only that, I think uh, there was just the, the, the atmosphere was filled with this, uh, the aspiration for change. And this is the first time ever where you had the opposition having uh, as widespread a support as the ruling party, and maybe just as well financed as the ruling party. So definitely this was plausible. Uh, this was, we saw that this was possible, and it has happened. So it's not a huge surprise, but at the same time, you know, African elections usually uh, give huge advantages to the incumbent, to the incumbent uh, leader. And so even when one thought that uh, an APC victory was possible, one still thought that uh, it, it also was possible that the incumbency factor could trump all the momentum that the APC had. Yes, yes. And now, Leo, in, in the past, you know that uh, one of the things that led to uh, opposition parties failing to secure the presidency is that they were splintered, and therefore the votes kind of uh, could not, you know, get together to oust the sitting president. What is it that really made the opposition come together this time and front Buhari and support him? Two or three things, Vincent. Uh, the first thing is that the opposition became stronger. For the first time, opposition parties that were splinters came together to form a party, as the APC. Now, under the, the, the leadership of people like Tinubu and Buhari, you have states that are very, very solid in Nigeria in that party. States like Kano, Lagos, and, uh, you know, so so Sokoto. These states, you know, tend to have a large power base of not just the material and wealth, to run elections and conduct issues, but also the population that it requires to win elections. And these all went to, to, to APC's advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, Professor Chono, you know, in the past, people have uh, uh, cast candidates like uh, Buhari, Buhari as, you know, representing the Muslim North. Uh, but we saw the vic his victory actually, actually came as a result of having a lot of support in the Middle Belt, in the South and the West. Uh, was that some kind of a realistic uh, analysis of him in the past, or what changed this time? I think uh, several things uh, were different in this election. One uh, was the emergence of the APC as a formidable opposition, uh, which was very well financed. But also, uh, he benefited, I think, from the splintering of the People's Democratic Party of the PDP. Yeah. A huge faction of the PDP, let's, let's remember, broke away and joined the APC. That immediately brought in several governors, several legislators, uh, people with means, people with money who could finance the campaigns. Uh, and so that was a huge uh, factor. But also, let's not forget that people were disillusioned about unemployment, about security, uh, about the, the collapse in the, the corruption and the power sector. And all of this disgruntled, and all of those people, dissatisfied Nigerians, I should say, flocked to General, General Buhari uh, because he represented an alternative. And the APC promised to do things differently. The APC promised to bring about probity and transparency, to build infrastructure, uh, to create jobs, and so on. So he did. Uh, he was able to benefit, I should say, from the, 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 the collapsing support base of the PDP. Uh, he peeled off support from the PDP. But also he benefited from the emergence of the APC for the first time uh, as a formidable opposition to the ruling party. Now, Leo, you know, some 
uh, I've also kind of, uh, you know, looked and wondered whether most of the people actually, uh, you know, came out in droves out of fear, or was it out of the determination to bring change to Nigeria? No, I think, I think it's out of resilience and determination to have change. Because, you see, when the election was postponed from February to March, people thought there was an attempt to scuttle it. You know, when the issues of PVC started coming out, people were afraid that this might be canceled. So Nigerians at a point became absolutely resolute in their determination to prove that democracy can work in that country. But let me tell you this. People are just tired of 16 years of a party that has decided to become exclusive. Mm -hmm. This is a party that now rejects people coming in. And, and uh, very interestingly, a yes. party that seems to have been rejected yes. by a former a powerful leader in exactly. the party, uh, General uh, um, Olishagun Obasanjo. A last word, uh, Professor Ochonu, uh, do you see this as a game changer for Nigeria looking forward? Uh, yes, I know. Yes, because I think it proves for the first time that an incumbent government can be thrown out of office if it does not uh, meet the expectations of Nigerians. So in that sense, it is revolutionary. It has never happened before. And going forward, I think it puts politicians in both parties, really, on notice that this could happen to anyone. If you disregard the voters and their aspirations and anxieties, this could happen to you. No, uh, in the sense that in the short term, very little is likely to change. You still have a raging uh, insurgency in the Northeast. You have IDPs, internally displaced people, who have to be resettled. So the familiar problems remain. Unemployment, inflation, the falling Naira, the, the, the fall in the price of crude. Mm -hmm. The Buhari has to contend with all these problems. So, oh. so, so, so Nigerians are unlikely to feel the immediate impact. So, well, only time will tell. Professor Ochonu, uh, Leo, thank you very much sure. for your perspectives. Well, uh, Moses Ochon is a professor of history at Vanderbilt University, and Leo Kane is head of VOA's House of Service. We want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54, and check out our headlines 24 7 on voaafrica.com.